Liquid media is referred to as broth. Broth may be placed into a sterile um, test tube. Um, an important part of these broth tubes is to note the types of caps. That these tubes have a screw cap that before we place them in the incubator or before we place them in the kill area after we've used them, that the cap is slightly loosened to permit venting of gases that accumulate during microbial growth. Without loosening the cap, pressure can build up inside the tube so that when we handle the tubes, they may explode into our hand. One disadvantage of using broth to grow bacteria is our inability to determine whether the culture is pure or not. A pure culture is a culture that contains a single type of microbe. On your right side, we have an uninoculated sterile um, broth tube. We can see that it's transparent. It lacks cloudiness or turbidity. On your left is a tube that has microbes growing in it, and we see that it's cloudy or turbid. Solid media, which we describe as auger, may be placed in several different types of containers. If the solid media is placed into a test tube and permitted to solidify at an angle, such auger is referred to as an auger slam. If the auger placed into a test tube is permitted to solidify in an upright position, the tube is referred to as an auger deep. Auger may be placed into a petri dish. A petri dish consists of two parts. The wider diameter portion is referred to as the lid. The smaller diameter portion is the bottom. We refer to the dish as an auger plate or a street plate. And it's on the surface of the auger that we'll place our bacteria so that they can absorb the nutrients and grow. Labels are always placed on the bottom of the auger plate. Before incubation, auger plates should always be taped shut. And when we incubate our auger plates, we always invert them or turn them upside down. So the label is pointing upwards. Information that needs to go on the label includes the microbe name or the sample name, the date, your full name, and the lab section to which you belong. When placing labels on broth tubes, the label always goes on the part of the tube in which the microbes are growing, in this case on the glass body. Labels do not go on caps. We frequently need to move or transfer, transfer our microbes from one place to another. For example, we may wish to transfer microbes from our broth culture to a fresh um, tube of broth. To move our microbes, we will use two different inoculating instruments, an inoculating loop which is a metal handle with a wire that's been twisted into a loop. Or we may choose to use an inoculating needle. The needle is just a straight piece of wire. When we move our microbes, it's important that we don't contaminate our cultures with unwanted environmental microbes. The techniques we use to prevent contamination with unwanted environmental microbes are described as aseptic or sterile techniques. Oops. I'm first going to sterilize my inoculating loop by flaming it. I'll light my Benson burner by slowly turning on the gas. I want to adjust my flame so that the height is approximately two inches. I'll adjust the air intake. I'll then sterilize my inoculating loop, killing all contaminating microbes by holding it in the Bunsen burner flame until the wire becomes red hot. I slowly flame the entire length of the inoculating loop. And in addition, I'll lightly flame half to three quarters of the wire handle to decrease contamination with environmental microbes. Next, flame the cap of the tube containing my microbes I wish to transfer. I'll flame by 
quickly passing the cap three times through the Bunsen burner flame, rotating each time. Try to hold the tube almost in a horizontal position. Remove the cap and flame the lips or the opening of the tube three times. I'll place my sterilized, cooled loop into the broth containing my microbes. I'll immerse the loop into the broth. Remove my loop and then once again flame the lips of my tube. Replace the cap. Gently screw it on. Flame the cap. Place my original tube into the test tube rack. I then will flame the cap of my fresh tube of broth three times. Hold in a near horizontal position. Flame the lips three times. And now I will insert my loop without touching the outside of the tube. I'll immerse my loop with the microbes it contains in the fresh broth. Withdraw my loop, flame the lips three times. Replace the cap, flame the cap three times. And very importantly, I need to flame my loop to kill any of the microbes that still remain. And once again, we'll lightly flame the handle to turn off the Bunsen burner when you're finished. To transfer microbes to an auger slant, we start by flaming our loop that contains our microbes. We flame the cap to insert our sterile loop in the media. Now we will place our, mi our microbes at the bottom of the slant. We lay our loop on top of the auger slant and gently withdraw it in an S-shaped motion if we wish to transfer our microbes to an auger deep, we will use our inoculating needle. We flame our needle. With auger deeps, we are going to perform what's called a stab. Needle, we will stab straight down through the middle of the auger deep. We try not to touch the glass at the bottom of the tube. We withdraw, replace the cap, clean the caps. Transferring our microbes to an auger plate, we'll use a technique called streaking. I'm going to use my inoculating loop. This is my original microbial culture. I heard the loop hiss and spit. That told me my loop was too hot. So I held it in the broth, shook it a little bit to make sure I have some living microbes present on my loop. To transfer my microbes to the surface of my auger plate using a four quadrant streak technique. The process of spreading the bacteria over the surface of the plate is called streaking. I'll first spread my loop full of bacteria over approximately quarter of the plate. I close my plate. I flame my loop to kill any remaining microbes on it. And now what I'll do is transfer some of the microbes from the first quadrant to the second quadrant of the plate. It's important that I make sure my loop is cool so I don't um, heat and kill my microbes. I'll test how hot my loop is by touching it to a portion of the uninoculated plate. If it doesn't hiss and spit, I know it's cool enough. I will transfer a few of my microbes from the first quadrant to the second quadrant, and now with my loop, spread them out over the second quadrant, close my plate, flame my loop to kill any remaining microbes, and repeat the procedure two more times. Cooling my loop, transferring some of the microbes from quadrant 2 to quadrant 3, streaking them or spreading them over the surface of quadrant 3, cooling my loop, transferring some microbes from quadrant 3 to quadrant 4, and then using large lightning bolt type streaks, spread those bacteria over the surface of quadrant 4. I'll tape my petri dish the lid to the bottom. I'll make sure that my label goes on the bottom of the plate. 
and I will then place my plate inverted or upside down in the incubator. When we're first learning to streak our plate, often it's helpful to draw quadrants on the bottom of the plate, have quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, and quadrant four. This will help us spread our microbes over the correct quadrant and will prevent confusion during the streaking process. Another way we can transfer microbes from one place to another, especially microbes growing in liquid media, is to use serological pipettes. Serological pipettes come in different sizes. For example, we have a 10 mil serological pipette, a 5 mil serological pipette, and a 1 mil serological pipette. It's important that we never mouth pipette. Instead, we'll use pipette pumps. The larger pipettes, the 10 mil and the 5 mil pipette pump, will use the green pi pipette pumps. We'll place the blunt end of our serological pipette into the hole with a gentle twisting motion, applying a little bit of pressure. If we want to transfer liquids or microbes from um, a broth culture to a new tube, um, using aseptic technique, the flaming techniques that we demonstrated earlier. We would place the tapered end of our serological pipette into the liquid we, we wish to transfer. We'll rotate the knob of the pipette pump, which creates the vacuum that will draw up our liquid to the desired volume. To dispense our liquid into a new tube, we may either reverse rotation of the knob for a controlled delivery, or in addition, we may press down on the knob at the top of the pipette to deliver the full volume. One mil pipettes are used. We will use the smaller blue pipette pumps again. On this 10 mil pipette, we see the values 10 in 1 tenth mil. This tells us the total volume of the pipette is 10 mils, and the value of the smallest units is 1 tenth mil. Mil pipette, the major gradations have numbers. The volume between um, the major gradation lines, in this case, on the 10 mil pipette, this represents 1 mil. The volume of the minor gradations here is one tenth mil. Five mil pipette, we see the values five and one tenth mil. The volume between the major, major gradations is one mil. The volume of the minor gradations is one tenth mil. The one mil serological pipette, the values are one and one one hundredth mil. The value of the major gradations, the volume between the major gradation lines here is 0 0.1 mil or 1 tenth mil. The volume between the minor gradations lines here is 0 0.01 mil or 1 one hundredth of a mil. Another way to transfer fluids or liquids is by use of a pasture pipette. These are delicate glass pipettes that can easily shatter. A rubber bulb is used. We place the blunt end of the pasture pipette into the rubber bulb and can then transfer fluids from one container to another. When we finish using pasture pipettes, we need to remove the rubber bulbs as they are not disposable. Very, very important that the pasture pipettes go into the sharps or broken glass container, never into the regular trash can. Plastic transfer pipettes may also be used. Normally, if they're used to transfer microbial cultures, after use they're placed into an autoclave or biohazard bin to be autoclaved.